what's up YouTube welcome to today's video where I'm going to show you why I truly believe a one chaos spell might actually be better than headhunter for a lot of mapping now I do know a lot of people have just been doing alk and go nowadays and we've been pretty much trying to find the fastest way to make it through the map get the sanctum and be able to pretty much do as many maps as possible so you can see here the damage is at like 200,000 so what's going to happen is that when you press your flask with soul thirst, you gain the soul eater buff until the flask duration runs out. Now currently my flask lasts for around 37 seconds, 35 seconds. And you can generally finish the whole map during that time. So right here we're pretty much doing form rotations where we are trying to... Oh, we already got enough room. Where we're trying to do as many uh, Shaper Guardian maps as possible. So we made it here in record time, like 20 seconds, right? And then look at this. Super fast whirling blade speed. And it's just so much speed, right? And this is only 100 stacks. And it looks like that. And you might be wondering, oh, the boss doesn't have any mods. Well, it has 200% more life. This boss has 200% more life. And we just finished the map in roughly 35 seconds or 40 seconds. I don't really know. But a lot of people might say, oh, this is a meme build, right? You have to finish the map in 30 or 40 seconds. And the answer is... You're not really right, and there are ways to change your perception about Soul Thirst for us to incorporate it into daily mapping and not have this, like, kind of like if you ever had a Tesla before, you would know range anxiety when you feel like, oh, your car is about to run out of gas. And it's the same way with Soul Thirst. You feel like your belt's about to run out of souls, and then once the flash ends, you're screwed. However, that's not exactly the case. So, as you can see here, Soul Thirst is at a whopping one chaos. And the funny thing is, when Soul Thirst actually was first getting released 7 years ago, now I know that sounds like a lifetime ago, Soul Thirst is probably going to be T1 rarity if you look at POE Trade, and it's the same for other T1 uniques like Shavs and Windripper, rip those items. Soul Thirst will most likely start ahead on its price. So basically, everyone always thought that Soul Thirst was going to be an amazing item. Now the reason why I searched for this, and the reason why I haven't been going to Headhunter, is because Headhunter has lost the majority of its power from the removal of Arch Nemesis. So even though the game got easier for us, since the game got easier for us because Arch Nemesis got removed, that also means that our Headhunter belt is a lot worse than before. And in general mapping, most people say it's around a quarter of its power. And the only time you actually feel the Headhunter buff is when you actually steal the Soul Eater mod from the rare. So only time that Headhunter feels really good is when you steal the Soul Eater mod and when you steal the Hasted Aura. So I have been farming the form, like I said before. And the form is literally you're trying to run through the Shaper Guardian maps as fast as possible, and then you do the invitations. And what you get out of it is Maven's Ritz. So I have 22 right here, and I have over 40 Shaper sets to sell. So I'm trying to find a build that can rush through the maps as fast as possible. And I actually discovered a video on Soul Thirst Flicker Strike that made me try to incorporate this idea into Venom Gyre. And it turns out that having a set of 40 second Soul Eater buff is more impactful and more overpowered than any set of Headhunter buff I could possibly use or possibly have. I have tried the maps out before with Headhunter and Headhunter just is not very good in Now Can Go. It's not very good in boss rushing. And outside of 5 wave farming and doing Legion farms, Headhunter is in a terrible state nowadays and like this person said, Soul Thirst is probably unironically a better 4 thumb belt than Headhunter as of current patch, and I actually completely agree after trying it out. So in order to understand how Soul Thirst actually works, we need to go deep dive into how to actually maximize it. So Soul Thirst basically grants you Soul Eater during any flask effect. Now the way that Soul Thirst works is that first flask used will get the Soul Eater buff, so you want the longest duration flask to be pressed first. So before you have any flask buffs on you, the first flash you press will be the one that gives you the Soul Eater buff. So this flash right here, I'm going to be pressing 5 first. Because this is the longest duration flash. So this is 20.7 seconds, 14.4, 15.2, 18.6. So I press the Sulfur flash first. So it gives me 43 seconds of Soul Eater buff. And even if these flash run out, I will not lose the Soul Eater buffs. I will not lose the Soul Eater buff. So we lose souls gained from Soul Eater when you use a flask. This does not mean that we actually lose the Soul Eater buff. So there's the souls we lose, and then there's a the Soul Eater buff that's separate. So if I accidentally press another flask, I'm still going to have the ability to gain Soul Eater buffs. I'll just lose all of my Soul Eater stacks. 
So you can still press other flasks. You just have 43 seconds or however long on the duration of Soul Eater. Now, the belt has reduced flask effect duration, so it has a roll 30 to 20%. So ideally, if you're going to run this build, you want to have 20% reduced flask effect duration so your flask lasts as long as possible. So if you look at my build right now, I actually have 20% reduced flask effect duration. Now, you can also pick up a corrupted belt. However, I can't right now as I'm using a Vol's Vision. Now, next up, we want to choose the right flask, and this is something that not a lot of people know about, is that every single utility flask has a different duration. And certain utility flasks have a much, much longer duration, and I think the longest duration sorted on PoE Wiki is actually a Bismuth flask at 8.5 seconds, Ruby flask is at 8 seconds, Sapphire flask is at 8, Topaz at 8, Aquamarine at 8, and Sulfur flask at 8. So that's why we're using Sulfur flask, it's at 8 seconds, and you can roll 39% increased duration. Progenesis Amethyst Flask is actually at 6.5 seconds, but we can roll up to 35% increased duration. So Progenesis can go up to like 18 seconds, I'm pretty sure. And then we have Diamond Flask, which is 6.6, .6, I think it's 6 seconds. And then you can roll 38% increased duration, so this one is 15.2 seconds. And then Wise Oak is 8.5 base, and then it goes up to 18.6 seconds with the Enkindling Orb. So I think some really good unique flasks to use are Wise Oak, Progenesis, Orias N, and also Taste of Hate. And if you really wanted the longest possible flask, I think it is a Sorrow of the Divine, and it's at 12 seconds without quality. So overall, these flasks are the ones that would give you the most duration possible. So after you choose the flask, you might be wondering how do you actually get as much duration on the flask as possible? Well, first off, you can get 28% quality on the Flask of Hillock as Captain of Research. Now, this is something you probably have to get through a service or you have to farm the stuff yourself. So right now, if I went and got 28% quality, my Flask would actually last a lot longer. So I should probably go do that. Now, Medium Cluster Jewels can grant you 6% increased Flask duration with it being affected by 35% increased effects. So what we want to do is we also want to get Distilled Perfection, which grants us 20% increased Flask effect duration. So if you look over here, you can get these nodes, 20% flash effect duration, 15% duration, 10, so you have 25, and then 45 over here, you have 10% flash effect, and you should get the flash mastery that gives you 10% flash effect, which actually helps out a lot. And then we're taking two medium clusters right here. And this one has distilled perfection, 25% effect, and this one's also distilled perfection, 25% effect, and then we take all of the nodes, and this does give us a lot of flask effect duration. Wait, I think the still perfection is now 10%. They must have nerfed it or something. But basically, this is what allows us to get all of our flask effect duration. And it is enough to make it so that the sulfur flask lasts for 43 seconds. And I do think that with the 28% quality, it could probably last up to 50 seconds. So let's we should probably get that done as soon as possible. Now the next part is, I do think where most people go wrong with the build and why their build ends up being so bad outside of the Soul Eater buff is because you go into using items like Solstice Vigil, so you don't have Omni, you don't have Ashes or something like that, and then you go into self curse Temporal Chains, so you have to use Shackles of the Wretched or Rot Blood, and both of those actually stack additively and it caps out at 75%, so what a lot of people do with Soul Thirst is that they curse themselves with Temporal Chains, they invest into Curse Effect also, along with Flash Effect Duration, and then they also have to use the Helmet Enchant sometimes for Temporal Chains buff effect, and then they have to use Solstice Vigil, but what that actually does is it makes it expire percent slower, so if you have 75% slower, I think it's like 3 times the duration, so theoretically, with max investment, you could probably get the Flash to last over like two to three minutes long however that does mean that your character is going to be a lot lot worse because you're using a lot of gear that's not really perfect for your build so that's why if you invest too much into flash effect duration then you create this problem where your character is really bad outside of the soul eater buffs and we do see that happen a lot now this is related to the stigma that solters has from a lot of people i do think that most people still think of solters as a meme build they look at it as a build that you use to clear strands, and if you don't clear strands in like 45 seconds, it's dead. However, I do think that this is the wrong way of thinking about it. I think you can make Solter still function really, really well. 
if you think about it as Solter's just granting you a 45 second Soul Eater buff on demand and the only stuff you really trade off for it is 3 passive points or 4 passive points and this is not even a huge trade off because 10% flash effect or 20% flash effect is actually a huge boost to damage in some cases and then you use 2 medium clusters and I guess these are actually trade offs so these are just flash effect duration nodes you could technically even spec into these nodes over here for more flask effect duration if you wanted to but basically I chose to do the minimum amount at a certain point because I did not want to invest too much into it because if I wanted to invest even more I had to spend one two three four more points and that does give me 30% flask of direction flask effect duration for four points but I just didn't feel like that was worth it or didn't need it to last that long now Flash effect duration is also really good for bossing. So when I do the form, I press all my flasks. It is really nice to have the flask last for 30 seconds. For most boss fights in the game, 30 to 40 seconds should be more than enough time to actually kill the boss, especially when you're doing invitations. So it does have a nice benefit for bossing. Now in the end, I do think that using solters correctly is all about finding the perfect balance between how much you trade off in order to make solters work. Like if you're going into a full setup where you're actually being a trickster, you're using self curse or you're using combs roots to negate the action speed from temp chains, then that's where you get into the problem where your build is pretty much a meme because you're fully investing in the soul thirst and outside of your soul eater buff, your build just doesn't really function that well anymore because you've spent too many passive points, you spent too many items on getting soul thirst to work. Now, I do think that Solter is an incredibly underrated item. I do know there's a lot of videos about it, but I don't think that it's actually caught on that much as a way of leveraging a lot of character power in the early game. And I do think early game, especially for League Stars, it could be an incredible tool. You actually look at Solter right now, it's a 0.2% play. There's barely anyone who uses it. And I do think that it deserves to be use more. It's definitely better to head on for general mapping outside of 5-way simulacrum and legion farming. And it's actually perfect for speedrunning because if you kill like 100 to 200 mobs, it's huge. If we actually look at what happens here, 6.7 mil DPS, if we just put it even at Soul Eater buffs at 100, which is only 100 mobs kill, we can see it already goes up to 20 mil DPS. So that alone, if you kill 120 mobs in the map, your DPS almost quadruples. And 120 mobs is absolutely nothing. So Soul Eater gives you 5% attack in Caspi. I think I forgot to mention that. So Soul Eater, even just killing a baseline of mobs, which is a very, very small amount in Juice Maps, your damage will quadruple. And I'm going to tell you right now, if you put on Head Hunter Belt, you will not get the same amount of tooltip damage as Soul Thirst will give you from killing 200 mobs. It's just a simple fact. Headhunter has been incredibly nerfed now. And this is Havoc's video where he mentioned how he was using Soul Thirst as a leak start tech for Trickster to gain a lot of power and to do the super juice maps. And he wasn't fully investing into self curse temp chains or anything. He just got the belt. He got the flask with the enkindling orb. So it lasts like 20 seconds. And he got some flash effect duration nodes on the tree. And that was it. There was no huge investment into uh, Self Curse or Solstice Vigil or anything. It's just about having that 40 second Soul Eater buff. And once it runs out, you press your flask again and you're back at it, right? And I do like uh, Soul Thirst and trying to figure out how to make the build work because it is fun to find that perfect balance between how much you invest into your flask duration and keeping your character's power level. So outside of the Soul Eater buffs, your character's still able to function. But yeah, I do think that Headhunter is in a really bad state compared to last league and Sentinel League. And we'll see if GGG decides to throw a bone or if Headhunter is in its perfect state. But currently, I would say ditch the Headhunter if you're doing general mapping and maybe consider using Soul Thirst if your build scales really well with attacking cast speed. But thanks for watching everyone. I hope you find more Mirrors, Divines, and Mage Bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye! Stay